to our second episode of season two. Today we are in Gabon in Central Africa. And our Gabonese proverb goes like this in French. Ne jetez pas vos rames tant que le pirogue n'est pas à la rive. This translates to do not throw away your oars until the canoe has reached the shore or the bank of the river. Our feature dish is called odika. But before we get into all of that, we're going to give you a little rundown about Gabon. Gabon lies on the Atlantic coast of Central Africa. It is bordered by Equatorial Guinea, Congo, Cameroon, and the Gulf of Guinea. Historical records indicate there were Bantu settlers in the Gabon in at least the 14th century. Then in the 15th century, Portuguese explorers and traders arrived, and eventually the coast became a central location for the transatlantic slave trade. After the slave trade, France set up a protectorate and it became a French colony until 1960. Gabon has a population of 2.1 million, and it is one of the lowest populated countries in Africa. The capital city is called Libreville, and the official language is French. But many local languages are spoken as well, including Fang, Sira, and Mbere. The cuisine in Gabon is a mix of French influence and African fare. So for example, you can easily find skewers of grilled meat served as street food. Now, you can find this kind of thing in many African countries, but in Gabon, it is called brochette, which is a French word. Since it's close to the coast, there is also a lot of seafood and fish stews, and stuffed crabs are common. There is a yambwe, which can be considered to be the national dish of Gabon. It is a palm butter chicken sauce. If you remember, we actually tried this out in the DRC last season, where it's called poule moam. Then there is a tanga. In English, it's called butter fruit, but it has more popular names. For instance, in Cameroon, it is called safu, and in Nigeria, it is called ube or pear. In Gabon, it is boiled and then spread on bread, so it's kind of like a spread, like butter, I suppose. Kind of like an avocado sauce, I would imagine. Yeah, I guess more like yeah. an avocado. So ube itself, which is the atanga fruit we're talking about, it's purple, and I think it's green on the inside, isn't it? With a seed? Depending on how ripe it is. Oh, okay, I've only seen the ripe ones. I don't mm. like it, so I don't eat it. Um, so we'll probably put up a picture of the blog just so you know what it looks like. Um, and there's nothing special. Like, the reason why I'm talking about it is because I don't like it. So I wanted everybody to see this fruit that I do not like. <laughs> <laughs> Fufu is common in Gabon, and you can eat it with a variety of soups. On the French side of things, you have beignet. This is deep fried pastry. There's chakri, a sweet dessert made with millet and milk or yogurt. You can top it with raisins or coconuts and nutmeg or cinnamon. It sounds divine. It does. It sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our feature dish. Odika is a sauce, but it is named after the main ingredient in the sauce, which is also called odika in Gabon. It comes from the andok tree and it is rich in fat and protein. It's a plant, but it's usually the nuts that we use for cooking in African cuisine. Mm -hmm. The nuts are ground and then used for cooking. Mm -hmm. It is also called Ogbono, African mango, or oro. Mm -hmm. So Ogbono is, like we said, it's, an, it's a nut, or odika, I guess. It's a nut. Um, in Nigeria, I'm more familiar with it being um, sold ground. Mm -hmm. But in Gabon, it looks like it's kind of made into blocks somehow. So you have blocks of it, and then you can grate it off, and that's when you get the powder. Mm -hmm. It's a brown, powdery substance with a very... Interesting smell. It's kind of is the word pungent. I don't know if that's a good I word. I wouldn't to use. use the word pungent. I don't think it's pungent. You don't like it. So <laughs> that's probably going into the way you're describing it. Okay, maybe I'm biased. But it's a. it, it definitely has a definitive smell. Mm -hmm. um, it's a distinct. A very distinct. You'll know what it is once you smell it or if you smell it again after you've smelled it for the first time. So... Odika or Ogbono is primarily used as a thickener in soups, right? And it gives the soup this relatively dark color that can be considered slimy in texture, similar to okra soup if you've ever had it. So this slimy texture is really not for everybody. And while I personally like it, I can understand how it takes some getting used to to some people. So to visualize the Odika that Ijama also going to, the soup itself may look slightly different based on some of the toppings you yourself may use or some of the vegetables. Um, ours turned out to be dark brown or yellowish in color, and it is very unassuming. 
So imagine a bowl of thickish brown soup with some turkey pieces peeking out to say, hey, what's up? So all I'll say at this point is don't knock it until you've tried it. Just bear with us and enjoy (laughs) the process we're going through. Um, Don't be put off by how unassuming it looks or the texture, especially if you plan to eat it with your hands. Some of us don't. Anyway, go ahead, Ijoma. Okay. So to make odeka, you'll need the odeka powder itself. You need some vegetable oil. The recipe I used called for tomatoes, onions, garlic, hot peppers, um, carrots, bay leaves, and then a protein of your choice. The recipe I used also used um, smoked turkey. So that's what I used. And you have some nutmeg as well. Basically how it works is you heat up your oil. You fry your onions, your garlic, and your hot peppers, depending on how much pepper you want. If you don't like it very hot, you might make that optional. You fry in your tomatoes and your carrots, and you wait until the tomato kind of, I don't know if the right word for tomato is dissolved, but you know you can fry chopped tomatoes until it becomes a sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you've done that, the next thing you do is to add in your odika. At the point that you add in your odika, because odika, like Yemi said, is very, it, it serves as a thickener. Mm -hmm. Once you put it in, the sauce instantly thickens up and then you can add your water. Think about two to three cups of water um, until you get your desired thickness and then allow it to cook a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the kind of protein you're using, we used, um, like I said, smoked turkey. And smoked turkey is already kind of ready to eat. But what I did was to put a little bit more smoked turkey flavor into the oil. I kind of browned it a little bit. So browned the smoked turkey first put in everything after it all cooked i tossed the smoked turkey back in and then you let it simmer for about 20 minutes or so um and then adjust your thickness as needed and i find i struggled with that too because when people say adjust to the thickness that you want that kind of assumes that you know what to do with it already. exactly i think it makes sense if you already know what you want but if you have no idea what it's supposed to be like at Mm. the end of the day it's like I guess I'm okay with this. Oh. Yeah. So like it was, and everybody seems to make their odika a little differently. Mm-hmm. So what I will do, or what we will do basically is on the blog, we'll put multiple links because there are also YouTube videos, which might be more helpful. The problem is finding videos where they tell you about the ingredients and then tell you the quantity they used. Because yeah. a lot of them were like um, one tomato, one onions, and then odika. And you're like, how much odika? So as that, much as you had to desire. <laughs> so and that's why I went with the recipe I went with because it actually told me how much odika to use. But there's even a story behind that mm-hmm. because the recipe said use 400 grams. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to go a little bit more into this, but I'm not a fan of odika, mm-hmm. of the ingredients itself, not the sauce. Yeah. People from Gabon, calm down, guys. Um, if we're talking about Ogbono, which is eaten in Nigeria, I would say exactly the same thing. But I was a bit hesitant to use all of the 400 grams. So I actually used 250. And I still found it too much. That's because you don't like it. <laughs> Let's go into that. Yummy, what did you think? So, as we've said, even in the intro to our podcast, Ijeomai and I, apart from being co-hosts, we're friends. So we've had discussions about Ogbono so many times. So I know she doesn't like it. And she knows I do. So when I first tried Odika, it reminded me of Ogbono. Now, there was a slight difference in flavor i would say with the nutmeg which was part of it and i thought that was kind of interesting so yeah especially having had ogbono before i'm like what's this in here let me interrupt really quickly to help if you've never heard of any of these before the way we use odika in nigeria is slightly different so we would cook it in palm oil Mm -hmm. not vegetable oil Mm -hmm. and it would be fried as a soup while this one was supposed to be a little bit like a sauce apparently um yes i can see the confusion i was confused as well I, I, I like can you explain that a little bit more so well, you're saying like Ogbono, like what i feel like Ogbono would have more water in it so it's oh more so odika is oh i see what you're saying where odika is relatively thicker than our I, Ogbono. I think so i'm not sure though um but definitely the ingredients use that a bit different because mm-hmm. Ogbono use i think use a little bit of green leaves as well yeah so it's palm oil it's chicken stock give it some color yeah it's okay <laughs> color can save that thing but whatever it's palm oil, it's, oh, it's the powder, it's chicken or meat stock or beef stock or whatever stock you're using. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think you put some le- green leaves. And I think that's the basis of that soup, right? It doesn't have, obviously it doesn't have carrots and tomatoes and all those yeah, things. Yeah, I it. think fundamentally, one of the things I found very different is the nutmeg. 
although the thickness we can debate it right because not everyone had the same amount of thickness in yeah. all the recipes you saw exactly. so and in fact when i looked it up some people actually had it the way i did which was i had mine with oatmeal fufu so essentially what i did i just took still cut oats and i blended it and turned it into a relatively thick um, consistency which is closer to the consistency of mashed potatoes um, and I had that with the Odikab. So some people have it like that, where it's more like a soup, the way we would have our Ogbono. And some people have it on its own. I actually saw some people just like whacking it down. I was like, okay, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't hate it, mostly because it was slightly familiar. There was that Ogbono feeling. I said this before, I'm going to say it again. The s- I hate using the word slimy because it makes it sound gross mm-hmm. but <laughs> Ijama you can't hate me for fish if you're going to like knock on Ogbono like this <laughs> or Odika sorry but I I can empathize and understand why it might not be for everyone or why everyone might say well I don't like the texture of it you know what that's okay as long as it tastes good and you can come to love the texture. Just give it a chance. Don't knock it till you try it, okay? But apart from this, the texture of it, mm-hmm. in terms of the taste, how would you describe what you tasted? Was it sweet? Was it savory? Was it peppery? Was it... Um, I would say it was a little bit savory. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it was peppery. Now, the one thing, too, is that for some of our ingredients from the continent, they're relatively hard to describe because they are unique to the continent. Mm-hmm. So how do you describe something that is essentially the one that has it, really? Mm. So um, as Ijama said earlier, when you open up Ogbono or Odika, you know that's that's what it is. It's kind of how we talked about Bere Bere, like the episodes before. So with it, it has this kind of, Mm, the smell is strong the closest way i would describe it is that it smells like fresh forests i don't know how to describe it. <laughs> like mangrove i don't know okay but hold on i'm gonna google this like i need to figure out like it's a strong and distinct smell for lack of how to describe it yeah it has it has a very strong and distinct smell i mean we looked up the best way to describe the smell of it and some people describe it as being very close to cheese miso or even stinky tofu i don't necessarily agree but if you need some kind of reference that's the closest we got and to be fair i think the smell gets toned down a little bit as you cook it exactly yeah exactly and if i can say that you know it's true dude just put a fresh night you're good so (laughs) let me talk about my experience with the dish okay so my issue is not with Odika sauce. What I struggle with is the ingredients itself. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself because I don't like eating this particular soup or bono that's made with this ingredient. Maybe it's the way it's made in Nigeria. Maybe if we try it fried in vegetable oil, not palm oil, it's like a sauce. You use some nutmeg and some spices. I'll like it better. And I was really hopeful and excited to try it, to be honest. And then I ripped open the bag and I got this familiar smell. I was like, okay, you can do this. And then I started cooking it. And when it was close to being done, I tasted it. And it tasted a little too close to the Okono that I'm used to. Yeah, it does. And you know, the funny thing was, I don't know why, but it never occurred to me in my mind. It never occurred to me that it could actually be similar. I know Yummy looks really confused right now. I legit thought that maybe I wanted it to be true, that if I fried it differently and cooked it differently, it wouldn't remind me of that dish, but it did. And then I started freaking out. And keep in mind that the recipe called for 400 grams and I used 250. Mm -hmm. I was like, this thing tastes too much like Obono. And so I messaged Yummy. I was telling her, look, I'm going to put vinegar in this thing to cut through. I panicked. I was like, do not do that. What the hell? (laughs) Don't. No, I was trying to cut through. I don't know how to describe it. So we've talked about how it's a bit slimy. But you see, the thing is, okra is also a little bit slimy. And I don't have a problem with okra. So my issue is not so much the texture. I can't really figure out maybe what it is. smell. I oh. don't know. Maybe. And uh, maybe it's thicker in terms of slime than okra. But I thought, okay, because I'm reacting this way at such a visceral level, I need something to cut through. So it's almost like when you feel a little bit queasy and you have like a lime or kiwi. So that was my idea of vinegar. And so I was like, I'm going to put vinegar in this thing. And then I started throwing in lots of nutmeg. 
as well. Yes, At some point, a lot. I was a bit scared that it was going to give us nutmeg poisoning, to be honest. Just to kind of cut through. I'm not going to comment on that. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, you did give your roommate to taste it and she... Oh, and that's the thing. She liked it. So, so the, the issue is not us. Oh, no, the issue is not you guys. <laughs> no, the issue is me. I want to make that clear. The issue is me and I think it's just my reaction to the ingredients. Kind of like yummy and fish. Maybe that's what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so to be honest, I didn't taste much of the dish. Um, I had about a spoonful and I had it with some boiled cassava. I've seen people have a bald plantain, bald cassava, bald yam. And so that's what I had. I tasted mine with. And then I told Yemi, take it and run with it. Yeah. She literally just gave me all the bowls. So, yeah. yeah. And I think maybe that's why the nutmeg stood out to me. Because someone over here (laughs) decided to (laughs) go a little ham (laughs) on the nutmeg. But thankfully, she didn't add the vinegar. I almost screamed when she said, I was like, please don't, don't like break down the molecules in a different way. First of all, for those who don't know, Ogwana is very sensitive the way you cook it. Apparently, I didn't know this. You can't just start being creative, like, randomly, right? Like, you kind of have to be ready for the consequences, especially given the fact that she made such a large quantity. You don't want to ruin the entire pot, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was good that you gave someone else to taste because then you realize, okay, it's not actually the dish itself. It's so funny. It's just that. You don't like it. um, And again, please, I was... I had like a visceral reaction to this. I was like, I, I cannot deal with this. And that's then she, how I, that's how I feel about fish. Fish well, is so you know so what gross. the funny thing is? I was panicking, and then my roommate walks in, and she opened the door because she went out. And she said, "Did you make ogbono?" And she said it was such joy. Yes, it's. So- and I went, well, a version of it. It's not exactly the same thing. It's a different kind of food. But, but she sounded with, kind of excited. Wasn't she did it? sound yeah. excited, and then she tasted it, and she was like, "Oh, it's good." And I go, "Are we? Are we tasting the same thing?" Mm-hmm. so clearly i'm the one who's biased here and <laughs> i i thought that this would be a lesson of growth for me i was really excited to come and be like wow nigeria zero gabon won because gabon knows how to deal with this um odika that nigeria doesn't know how to do it and i can you know i can rat on i can make noise and make fun of nigeria because i'm nigerian so come for me i was ready to say yeah come for I, Ijama, not me, please. <laughs> <laughs> i was ready to say nigeria zero gabon won and i was like maybe not so much it's the same thing to me. no so you took the l on this one the what now the l like loser okay whatever. <laughs> i'm a loser without a bono. i can live with that no but that's okay you know some people like bonus some people like fish um, actually we should also probably be calling this odika because people like it. oh yeah sorry odika we brought a <laughs> foolish nigerian behavior we here. have <laughs> nigeria we're so bad like we just see something and we call it what we know it as we kind of usurp things no it's we're odika sorry. it's odika. odika yes all right Here's the thing. At the end of the day, I would recommend it. I would recommend you at least try it. Especially if you've not had okra before or a version of a dish that has a slimier or draw, as our people say. Because this slimy has this negative it, connotation. It does have a negative connotation. So instead of slimy, please, I'm going to use the word draw. So <laughs> honestly, the slimy, the connotation. I don't like saying slimy, yeah. actually. So it has this drawy, you know, draw, draw consistency. But... If you ever go to a Nigerian restaurant, try Ogbono. Or if you go to a Gabonese restaurant, try Odika. You can even ask them for a taster. And honestly, give it a chance, please. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like this one over here. Just don't, give it a no, chance. No, don't mind me. Give it a chance. And I think it goes by another name, uh, Chocolat en Dijon. Mm-hmm. Like, I, don't, I think that means indigenous chocolate or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know where the name comes from, but yeah, that's another word for it. So, yeah, that is all we have for today. We'll see you again in two weeks and we will be chatting with you from our next destination which is a little north and a little west of gabon thank you for listening while the podcast airs every two weeks we have a backlog of episodes just waiting for you to enjoy the show is a collaboration between tunuka media and 234 pantry african my kitchen is produced by tunuka media and co-hosted with 234 pantry so while on instagram Visit both Tunuka Media and 234 Pantry. With Tunuka Media, you'll find out about more shows produced which aren't necessarily food-related, while on 234 Pantry, you will get more food-related content. For example, Tunuka Media also produces another show called Overlooked, which I host. All the links with the relevant information to connect with us are located in the show notes. Like, subscribe, and share within your community. We'd also really love for you to give the show a high rating wherever you enjoy your podcasts.